Chit. Oh, Chit. What is going on, Chattermoran? Hello. Hello, everybody. Let me turn the music down so I can hear things. I can't, I can't make my brain louder, but I can make the music quieter. Octal, hello. Welcome. Uh, and everybody else, welcome back to Therapy Thursday. Uh, today is January 4th of 2024. If you're unfamiliar with what Therapy Thursday is, every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, uh, my sister and I get on here uh, and basically discuss mental health topics. And we encourage anybody that's got any mental health questions to come on in, jump into chat and bring them to us. And then, you know, we can kind of go over them. And you go, well, why would I want to do that? Why would I come to you? Who are you? I am a guy with a computer. And my sister, Asteria, is a professional licensed therapist. She's licensed in the state of California and is a uh, family and marriage uh, counselor with a specialization in trauma and addiction, I believe is what they are. Uh, she'll probably explain all that when she comes in. Uh, what my therapy session started. Yeah, <laughs> this is how Octal got his therapy is by coming in here. Uh, so if you're watching this on YouTube at some point in the future and you would like to jump in, there's a link in the description below the video that'll take you to my Twitch page so you can follow us on there. Or you can just type into your old search bar, go to twitch.tv forward slash kilted underscore pork. Uh, yeah, I think that should do it. Um, yeah, without further ado, let's bring her in. I, I, got, I got something I'm going to kind of surprise her with. It's going to be great. Maru. On this episode of Therapy Thursday, Kilted turned into a whale. <laughs> and you help us find his son. Yeah, Dory. <laughs> I speak whale. <laughs> 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 I can't the patience the like what's his name? Marlon or Merlin, whatever his name is, had in that freaking movie. I I'm just like I don't blame you, random clown fish. I don't blame you. Yeah. It's just uh... Yeah. So how are you? Actually no, do your spiel. Oh <laughs> thanks. Spiel first. Uh, spiel first. Hi. I'm Asteria. I am a marriage and family therapist that works out of California. Um, I, my backgrounds of in clin or in my clinical work uh, include um, or are more specific to to trauma treatment, uh, addiction background, um, dissociative disorders personality disorders depression and anxiety um i my dominant population i work with is adults uh between the or 18 plus um and what i like to do with kilted here is that we take therapy thursday as an opportunity for it to give back to the community because ultimately um mental health treatment is expensive and i am fully aware of that um, but do I feel that people should get some kind of support in getting resources? Yes. So welcome to, uh, to Therapy Thursday. That's what this is for. Um, we use this space as a uh, chance to ask general questions related to mental health, including topics related to mental health or various uh, general situations to which we can support. We go back and forth and giving our thoughts and ideas i add in my little twist of uh, therapy into all of it um we uh, we answer questions related to um to various mental health diagnoses though we do not do diagnosing here um that is just very unethical and i am totally not okay with that um i bet there are other therapists that do that outside of their work and um don't find them either they should stop that too um so we don't do diagnosing here as i stated so if you think that your mom's a narcissist she probably is um 
In addition to that, because I do, uh, or because I am a mandated reporter to my clients and those related to my clients, um, I am not obligated to do any reporting here. However, um, I just don't feel ethically sound to talk about certain topics related to my protected classes. So I do, or so one of my hard no's is I do not discuss suicide with anyone that is uh, under the age of 18. Um, so outside of that, feel free to ask questions to a therapist What or questions you think you should be asking your therapist. I don't totally have opinions about that one, actually. Um, do you have questions about diagnosing or trauma or mental health to the best that I could suggest? Are you looking for some resources that I could pass along? Um, other than that, throw your questions and comments, concerns into the chat. We will go ahead and just kind of go into our own banter between Kilted and I. Um, and if we see, or well, we Kilted sees it, shout out to Kilted. Um, then we'll go ahead and put a pause on what we're discussing and we'll give uh, that space to you. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and get started for another Thursday. How are you? Well, first off, I'd like to say that Octal says hello. Oh, hi, Octal. Welcome to another Therapy Thursday. Everyone in chat needs to be like Octal and come every Thursday. <laughs> like, be yes. here all the time. <laughs> Shout out to Octal. Yes. Um, and then also before we get started, I had mentioned to you, uh, I don't know when it was, earlier in the week that I had purchased something and it had arrived. Oh, yeah, and you said that you weren't going to tell me because you thought that it would give me the old case of the ding, ding, it's I wish that was me. Uh, maybe. I don't know if it's a... Uh, I don't know. I, I think you just, you'll enjoy it. So I'm going to send you a picture, and then I'll hold it up to chat. <laughs> so I just send it to you. And then I'm not oh, going to say ding, what it is. Ding it. <laughs> I wish that was me. What? Oh my God. <laughs> it's actually accurate. It is. It's a actual like classroom quality human brain. Uh, there's my favorite part of the brain. The prefrontal. Boop, 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 boop. Prefrontal right there. That's mm. this part, chat. <laughs> I love that. Octal says, shout uh, out to you, Asteria and Kilted. You're really changing my life. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's always good. Oh, thanks. Thank you for that, Octal. Definitely appreciate you being here. Yeah, so this uh, thing actually... Oh, dang, I have to see the thing now. Hold on. Let me pull up to it. <laughs> just because uh, we keep talking about different parts of the brain, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> These are big words. <laughs> <laughs> that's a word and you're like oh it goes here and here and here and I'm like I don't know what parts of the brain that is so I figured maybe chat might not know it either so why not get something that you can actually use see look nice. chat even breaks down so you can get the halves so there's the outside and then you got the inside with all the little numbers and stuff on it and then, uh, what else? Even breaks down further. Hopefully without breaking it. The prefrontal Gosh, right? cortex comes off, apparently. Uh, I this is the prefrontal cortex. cortex. <laughs> this goes, is what I talk about all the time. <laughs> it goes there. Like, So that comes out, and then there's the anxiety and fear. Oh, let's see what the hell is this piece called. Oh, it just says learning and memory. So then you, you have the inside breaks down further, and you get the other bits as well. So that's your, I guess, your spinal cord, the white piece. Oh, yes. The spinal that. cord is a very important piece when it comes to uh, neurocognitive functioning in regards to your system receiving signals and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and put on the, uh, the stream on to yes, now we so have I nice can see it so I can see your brain. Oh, all right. If you're going to pull that out, then let me know. Okay. 
Let me go ahead. You, I can see you now. Let me uh, show me the brain. Okay, so it should be probably life size, if not a little bit bigger. So here's the first like half where everything's labeled onto it. Oh, that's some good stuff so and then, far. Uh, so on this end, so that's just like the whole piece. Uh, oh. Okay, okay. So well, before this is you really keep important. going, like you got a delay. Let me finish. <laughs> and so then you have this, the front comes off. And so, like I said, you're going to have a delay. And then you get That's okay. this piece that comes out. Damn it. There it is. So that all comes out. And then there you go. You got all your bits. So pretty neat. I like how it, like, the second that the prefrontal comes off, everything falls apart. That's very symbolic. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, if you can go back to holding the first piece, the big first that'd be piece. really great. And showing the inward part of it, not the outward squishy part. All right, Putting chat. the brain this back is the together. Brain. Man, you got a hell of a I delay. I'm holding it up. My shoulders are hurting. Okay, there we go. I do have a delay. Oh my god, that's so cool. Okay, so the part that Kilted or many other people in this world that like to um, talk about, quote, monkey brain is the part where it says 45 um, and 47 and all that. That area right there, whenever oh. I talk about the limbic system, this part. that's the part I'm talking about. So the middle part, the middle orange bit. Yeah, and so you know what's interesting about that is that you see this, the, the white part, or of like 65 and all of that, mm -hmm. where it has the brain stem. The, remember when I said it goes from point one to point two to point uh, three to the prefrontal cortex? Yeah. This is what I mean, where it goes to the white bits of like sixty four or and all this to the pre, or to the limbic system, which is the little orange spot, then to the prefrontal cortex. So this which is, is what like I mean. This is yeah. So this is what I mean between when people are like, why am I reacting to things in a way that I'm not respond or the way I want to respond? Because the place to where you want to respond to situations is in your prefrontal cortex. Whereas quote monkey brain or reaction brain is the first stop on the in, in on the information train. So you when we're learning about recovery of self, we're learning how to overcome the power that we give to our limbic system and allowing more of it to be shifted into our prefrontal cortex. Gotcha. So yeah, it even says on here, so it comes up the uh, spinal cord or was it the nervous brainstem? Brainstem, there we go. And then right here in the middle, it says relay sensory info to cortex, sexual urges, uh, moti, wait, Motivational states? Motiv oh, so, motivational. Sorry, it's all it's broken up. I was like, what the fuck? That's is that okay. Say? So, <laughs> motivational states. Um, this is an area about like memories. Um, this is emotions and everything. Yeah. Okay. And then, and the prefrontal, at least on the two different parts. Once we throw all this back together. Yeah. She she thick. There we go. Oh, so, isn't she a beautiful? So on the front, mm -hmm. here, chat, just showing it to the screen a bit. It says the right, Brain. the right prefrontal cortex says creativity, intuition. Uh, what the hell, artisticimodio? And wait, wait, damn, they got it all spread out again. Artisticimotional. Oh, artistic, emotional. Yeah, artistic and like when it comes. So this is where it's the expansive piece of like what are called social emotions or newer emotions to which we've developed as a socialized being in the most recent whatever amount of years. 
um, where we like live in socialized areas where we're in close proximity and we're not living out in the wild being monkeys and whatnot. Right. So this is where, because again, and maybe we could talk about this and have this be our subject today, because in that limbic system, when it comes to the to the the dominant the dominant emotions that all humans have, well, excuse me, all mammals have is that we all have seven basic emotions, right? But the experience and the expansiveness of social or newer emotions go into our more prefrontal cortex because that's where much more of our morals and values are placed into. Yeah, it says rational, logical, analytical, and language. Correct. So it's all up in the prefrontal. At least that's what's written on here. Correct. So the limbic system, is that the the middle orange bit you said? or? Correct. Okay, so limbic system. So, uh, stem, uh, nerve, uh, limbic system. Sorry. Long day. It's okay. Then travels out prefrontal where we, so it goes through stupid brain and then into logical brain. And, well, and I, I wouldn't even call it logical brain. I mean, I guess teach their own, but I call it much more processing brain because so one of my favorite insults to give people because everyone just calls each other very basic insults when they're mad at people or if they cut them off in traffic it's like oh you're stupid you're blah 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 all this my favorite insult is like someone didn't grow past their limbic system Uh (laughs) um so i would say everybody got smooth brain (laughs) oh you got this smooth yeah their brain has no lumps so you need all these lumps no, no thought. Just smooth. <laughs> Just smooth. S M double O F. Smooth. Smooth. Um, you do, you do a real good with all that smooth over there. Okay, get back in your lane. <laughs> so it sounds like polishing a car. And when you rub your hand across it, it's smooth. smooth. <laughs> um. So, um, anyway, but if we want to take a moment to talk about this and then we'll do check-ins just because we're talking about it right now. Um, I want to, and especially because you have the brain and, uh, I cognitive is like, it's the things that, uh, make my whistle quit. Um, well, first off, are you excited about what I got? Yes! Oh, God, yes. It makes me want to go buy my own, so I need you to send me the link. (laughs) Amazon.com brain. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, fantastic. And you're sure that won't take me to the black market? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, Well, okay. Never mind. I can't guarantee shit. (laughs) Okay. Um, well, what I wanted to discuss in regards to this is talking about the seven basic emotions because I feel like it's really crucial in regards to like understanding people and a lot of times when I teach this when I run group therapy or when I'm running specifically um, the topic of what is called mentalization which you know I talk about a lot on here Mm -hmm. um, uh, is that when people start to understand um that everybody has seven basic emotions they start to like understand it's like oh i can't just get rid of these emotions i can't just like a lot of times people internalize a lot of shame towards the way that these emotions uh are having these emotions but i think what's a different way to look at it is that everybody has these seven basic emotions however as I said earlier, all mammals have these seven basic emotions, but humans are the only known creatures to engage in emotional suppression. The only creatures are especially, it's more like when it comes to mammals, because that's all I can speak on. That Thank you, society. To engage in emotional suppression in the name of survival interesting right yes. so so let me go ahead and jump into this because why not um so the seven basic uh, so the seven basic emotions are fundamentally important 
because one, they are all local localized in the same area of the brain, which limbic system. Um, they invoke the same physical reactions, and each of them are linked to a set reaction pattern. No, right, hold on. All right, chat limbic system. Remember that one, the orange one. Like right that's what middle. we're talking about. That's the limbic system, right here. This bit. Okay. Now, before we jump into the seven basic emotions, I'll even, even if it's just uh, uh, octal or anything like that, I would love to also hear your thoughts too. What do you or anyone in the chat believe are um, some of the seven basic emotions? Gosh, I wish you had a whiteboard. (laughs) I I swear to God, I was looking at whiteboards today. (laughs) I was like, if you had a whiteboard, this would be a whole different freaking... (laughs) discussion pogmas has a whiteboard i need to ask him where he got his uh <laughs> call me al it's easier all right so octal is now just called al um oh, okay so al. all right so the how many are there seven you said seven basic emotions fear anger you said fear 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 Fear, anger, yes, those are two of them. Happiness, sadness. Uh, not happiness, sadness slash separation, anxiety. Okay. Um, it's like, does like hunger count? Nope. No. So these are just like feelings, feelings, not like oh I feel uh, no. hot. No, I said I said emotions, and oh. there are a difference between emotions and feelings, to which we will also discuss in a second. Okay, uh, let's see. Al thinks I think fear and love and anger and anxiety. Ooh, okay. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and open the chat so I can type them. And put have them in the chat just so that we could all look at it together. So okay. this is what they are. Now we have so to delay they until they covered. They include. Um, I'm gonna say them out loud first, and then I'll type them up. So first one, in no particular order, just that it's in the order of my notes. Chat is I the whiteboard. Write notes now. all the time. Yeah. Chat is the whiteboard now for the time being, and then maybe we'll pick up a whiteboard. <laughs> They're um, damn it, and I gotta find room. <laughs> I want one though. I mean, it could be a tiny one. Like I have a little tiny one I have on my fridge. Um, but anyway, um, one is interest and curiosity slash exploratory behavior. Interest and curiosity, or also exploratory behavior that's number one that's an emotion that is an emotion and i'll Ah, tell you why in a second okay two is fear so whoever said fear you're right uh both myself and al uh, said fear shout out to al and shout out to kilton uh three is anger so shout out to y'all both four is lust sexual urges um Five is separation anxiety slash sadness. Six is love slash caring. So shout out to um, Al for that one. And the last one is play slash joy. Okay. Okay. So, but while I type them up in the chat, um, what are your thoughts? I mean, it makes sense. It's just some of them I didn't know would be considered emotions. Like I said, the uh, uh, what exploratory and like curiosity. I because again, oh gosh, sorry, I'm having a little bit of a issue so with it. Maybe I won't type it, but only just because it's giving me issues. Um, but only being or the only thing that's being is because. I said emotions, and the term that keeps getting said is feelings. Didn't I say emotions that time? 
Oh, you did that time. Yeah. I'm okay. saying like this is not and I'm just you, but like the universal you for everyone. Right. When when people people interchangeably use emotions and feelings all the time. And at one point I even asked, like, is there a difference? But now in all my research, guess what? To pass me, there is. Yay. Um, yay. So I'm gonna go ahead and say the difference between emotions and feelings. Write down notes if you'd like to. One. Emotions are the body's natural, or excuse me, emotions are the body's uh, reactions to, to specific stimuli. So emotions are the body's reaction to specific stimuli. This is where the term emote comes into play. We emote and express, right? And we and we may have bodily reactions as a re- result of stimuli that can come from from external sources, internal sources, or both. So emoting or emotions can come up in different forms. What ways do you think that that humans uh, express emotion? Crying. Crying is one. Anger. Nope, that's... Well, yes, it is in itself, but it's more so, it's like, it's the setup of a specific type of behavior. So... For instance, it's like crying would be one. Um, it would be your hands clenching, your raising heart your voice. racing, your voice raising, your stomach clenching, um, your sweating. Um, sweating. Um, it could be a multitude of these different ways, right? Yeah. These are all your body's reaction to stimuli, right? Kind of like a jump scare. So, Kind of like a jump scare, right? Because again, the thing is, why this is this is really crucial for a reason, which I will get to in very shortly. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this emoting is just our body's reaction to stimuli. It could be external, it could be internal, it could be both, right? And this is this is really crucial when I have said in previous streams that the body can't tell the difference between something happening in the past, the present, or the future. I like to use the example with my clients of when you revisit mentally an argument. Have you ever mentally revisited an argument that you you had? Me never. Yeah, of course. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> and when you revisit that argument, what are some things or what are some things that you uh, can recognize your body does? when you do that heart rate for sure Mm -hmm. uh maybe sweating i mean it could happen do you you start to sigh more do you feel an increase in your body temperature does your cheeks flush yeah i was gonna put that all under heart rate right and all of these things is your body's body's emotional patterns right Mm -hmm. The reason why it's important that we stop or we take a pause before we jump into emotions or excuse me, into feelings, <clears throat> because um, because I could tell you the pattern of a, a various collection of ways of emoting or of emotions. And if I did, you, um, you may equate that to different feelings. So this is going to go ahead and give my segue into what feelings are. Feelings are the conscious experience of the body, the bodily state during emotional activation. Feelings are the conscious experience of the bodily state during emotional activation. So when we say we are feeling, that means we are, we are in itself feeling it. We are experiencing it. 
And, um, but the thing is, is that we are the ones that identify what that is. So how, how do we, and because of that, there could be such a lot, there could be such an array of different ways we can define that. So if I give you, here's an example. If I gave you the collection of the following emotions, you're going to tell me what is the first feeling that comes to mind, meaning what you think you would feel in that situation if you experienced this collection, okay? Okay. Hands clenching, stomach tightened, heart palpitations increased. Uh, Stress. Right? That's what you would say, right? Yeah. I would say anger, and I would say anxiety. Okay. And all of that is correct. The reason being is because, and why this is so crucial, is because many a time, the relationship that we have with the ways that we experience these collection of emo- or of emotions and emotions um, impacts the way that we interpret it in ourselves and in others. So here's another, and, the, and here's another great example, right? Butterflies in your stomach. When I say butterflies in your stomach, what comes to mind for you? Uh, nervousness, adrenaline. I guess. Actually, maybe not adrenaline. I can go multiple different directions. I'd say nervousness. So nervousness, sometimes I've heard people equate uh, butterflies in their stomachs for like a new um, romantic relationship or some, uh, like or butterflies in their stomach if they're about to uh, do a speech or they're going to engage in a new experience, right? Yeah. I've heard people when I sh- when I teach this group People say, oh, I love when I get butterflies in my stomach when I meet people for the first time. Um, or like, or when I get into a new relationship and all these things, I crave that feeling. And it was so interesting that I heard that because I'm like, do you know what butterflies in your in your stomach is? And they're like, what? And I was like, it's anxiety. Yeah. That's anxiety. That's anxiety. That sounds about and right. Because an- I hate anxiety. that shit. <laughs> Because anxiety is the, it's the unknowing of. So your system is preparing of how to respond, right? right? And so many a time, the thing is, is that a lot of people are like, oh, I hate this feeling, right? It's like, it's not about the dislike or that the or excuse me they say oh this emotion or this feeling is bad it's like it's not about that the feeling is good or bad it's that do you equate it to something that you choose to be preferable or not preferable to be comfortable or not comfortable and this is really important of a difference because this is an impact from trauma if you were exposed to environment to which you did not get a chance to understand your feelings and that to allow and apply proximities and barriers um, and understanding to them, your system will overextend the experience of the feeling, which will then be pushed to motivate many times in the name of survival to emotional suppression, which is what causes a plethora of mental health and physiological and medical issues nonetheless relationship or relational issues which are all trauma right so so when people say and you can put this one in your hat for who anyone's listening they're like oh being mad is a bad thing it's like telling them is like what i heard is that someone taught you that being mad is a bad thing and now you're not sure how to live with it yes and so in order to keep yourself safe 
you keep telling yourself that and you also tell others in the name of personal safety. That makes sense. Michaela, welcome. Yeah. Um, Hi, Michaela. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense because I try not to get mad at things because I know it can be detrimental to a situation, but I see other people get angry at things. I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, and again, it is what it is. It comes down to the relationship to which your upbringing, your environment, your socialization has allowed space to increase awareness of your uh, of your feelings to which bridges towards your emotional reactions and has been supported and nurtured. Here is an example to which I will share with folks because I can do that here because I am not on the clock. For the longest time, I thought being angry was a bad thing. Anytime somebody expressed anger, I would avoid them. Anytime that they ex expressed it, I would start to do things outside of how I would like to be because I thought my body and my, my being was in danger. Right. Because I was raised in a home with disproportionate expressions of anger. To that's an understatement but anyway yeah <laughs> so, i said that was but, like yeah, it seems worse than that <laughs> it was but that's the summary yeah we don't uh, have time to read that book right now you just gotta do the inside cover summary it's like you just gotta read it and just well you can buy it later we'll talk about it later yeah but um but um but because of that i suppressed my anger for a long time and I kept on trying to come across as this cool, calm, collected individual. Then what I was notorious to, to do, if you were either one of my partners or you were my one of my best friends, um, heck, it definitely wasn't any of my family members when I was growing up, I would explode in the privacy of my home. I mean, explode. I would, I would yell, I would, I, I, it, it was just such, and a, a an overextended expression of how I was feeling because the thing is is that you are the, the thing that is detrimental to human survival is emotional suppression. Gabor Monte, which I will quote probably to the end of my days, they did something along the lines, I'm not gonna do a direct quote because I don't have I don't care that much, but he said something along the lines that he says Emotional express or suppression, although is a survival tactic, uh, can in the long term cause significant physiological illnesses and may even result to death. Right. So, short term benefits of survival, long term impact of survival. Okay. Right? So the thing is about when we talk about recovery and what we're talking about getting healthier is that we're not trying to say what feelings are wrong and right because that just doesn't exist. When people are like, this is a positive feeling, this is a negative feeling. They are all feelings. But what we say is positive, negative. What we are saying is what is comfortable, what is uncomfortable, what is socially acceptable, what is not socially acceptable. Right. Except that is where I think society as a whole has created its in itself a socialized illness to have regurgitated and re or enabled a message for on a universal level for people to think what is good and bad emotions. It will slowly kill us, in my opinion. Um, and everything that I've done my research in supports that idea. Because any time that people cannot express the, the, the authenticity of self, they will suppress it. And if they continue to suppress it to a point where they have then taught themselves that they cannot be themselves, it can lead to a plethora of things such as gastrointestinal issues, mm -hmm. cancers. Um, it can relate to impacts to mental health 
it could relate to um, heart attacks. Um, so nonetheless, these things could end life, nonetheless suicidality, which can then, you know, have somebody find the only man maneuver to releasing themselves from ongoing pain other than to end their life themselves. So that kind of makes some sort of sense. And I, I'm just kind of thinking out loud here, but you know, no there's worries. always that uh, claim that uh, men die before women do mm -hmm. typically. And sure. I think that kind of goes in line with it because well, socially you're not, you don't get angry, that whole thing. And then as being men, we have higher testosterone levels, which causes us to be fucking angry a lot. And so when we can't let it out, that kind of might tie in with the whole splat over early thing. We die yeah. because we can't let go of the anger that is caused by the uncontrollable hormones that pass through our bodies. Well, ultimately, I think that even with what you shared, I feel like that still puts too much responsibility onto the male to have that figured out themselves. I, I, this is why one of my passions is male health, mm -hmm. um, and especially male mental health, um, which is like the first. I know this is ironic because I, I've been working in uh, with the female population the last couple of years, but I started working with male population. Uh, or an all male population. And when I was working with an all male population, um, I was also working with prison mentality, gang mentality, and homelessness. Um, and when I was, one of the patterns I recognized was something very similar to what another um, famous like mental health um, leader, uh, her name is Brene Brown, also a famous in the mental health world. Okay. Um, all, all these names are resources if anyone wants specifics. Gabber Mate, Brene Brown. Um, and she made the example because she was talking about the the crucialness of vulnerability, right? Um, and she did a lot of her research focused on females for a long time and she published her 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 work and she wrote a book and everything like that and while she was doing a tour for her book she was approached by a male um after the the this guy's like wife and daughters had her sign the book and he said i noticed that you only did your research with women mm -hmm. and he she's like yes I dominantly did, did my research on women. It's like, and he asked, why not males? And then she's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, the reason I ask is because those those women that you just signed the books for, my wife, my my two daughters, um, that's so great that you promote and support that they can be they could be they could be vulnerable and open. But if I ever fell off of my white horse as their protector, as expressing vulnerability, exp uh, finding a way so it shows that I crack, I am a, I, I am risking being less than a man in their eyes, which yes. can be life-threatening to me. And that's true. And, and because of this, she then turns her whole research um, to, she changed all of her reach, or she did her research to males as well, in addition to, um, in addition to the work that she did with women, right? But she emphasized that on a societal level, we need to change the trajectory to which we allow or we define what is important for emotional expression because it is the it is the line of life and death and what is what is so impactful to the average lifespan, right? And to wrap it up, because I see there's things that are being popped up in the chat, um, is that, um, or at least for just to do a quick pause, is that male health get or mental health gets so undermined, not just from the general population, but because it starts to get into the realm of what is the lines between masculinity. Uh, or what defines masculinity um, 
and such toxic statements in in Renee or in Brene Brown's research she shares, and then we'll jump into this uh, to these points, is that uh, she says statements that have been so critical and crucial and has been the line of life and death for male folks is statements of man up, be a man, and men don't cry. Yes. And unfortunately, in society, that crap has probably gotten way out of hand. It's and just under my own experience, I've said this before, but I've had two or three separate relationships that have ended because at one point I had broken down and I cried in front of them and they lost all respect for me and it was just downhill from there. They walked out. Yeah. And They're like, these, oh, you're a, you're not a man, and then that was it. So, and these instances are instances that can be life and death, and these instances are on a larger scale are what promote um, the the disconnect between emotions and feelings which is impactful to the ongoing enabling of a mo- or of generational trauma um on a larger macro scale um but we'll get more into that in just a second yeah. i see stuff in, happening up in the chat all right so al says hysteria random questions so i've been struggling to change my old habits and routine and that feels like it's stopping me from moving on from my breakup any tips on that okay uh, I've been struggling to change my old habits and routine, and that feels like it's stopping me from moving on from my breakup. Um, I think I'm gonna grab a, another beverage while you think. Okay, go ahead. You grab a beverage. I will also grab some water because I think water is crucial. Uh, if anyone has not reminded anyone in chat today, go drink your water. Water is important. Um. I will promote water drinking to the end of that. Um, I have sparkly oh, water. There's more. It says, for like, for example, I check my phone every morning for texts. When I go out, I pull my phone in because I used to call her when I was driving, etc. And every time I have a meal, we used to take pictures every few days. We watch a TV show episode. Well, ultimately, Elle, I just want to go ahead and let you know um, that... I know that just because you kind of have shared this and we've been we've been given the privilege to be a part of this like this journey for you first of all one of the things i want to say is to allow yourself to give yourself grace um it is still very fresh um what's going on for you um and many a times oh when it comes to post breakup um things are going to continue to feel like you have to fall into routine um that of what you did in the relationship i would just encourage you to start slow and doing smaller changes and giving yourself grace if it's like difficult to kind of pick it up on a bigger scale or at a more fast pace because even as i was saying earlier or what we were talking about earlier is that our brains need like wait hold on tilted Pick up the pick up the brain. I got brain. Just, just, okay, brain. <laughs> is that um, our brain needs patterns? Our brain is set up for patterns, and so when we start to get into routines, our brains need us to fall into those patterns, get used to and accustomed to these patterns, because our brains have. A number or has an objective to being or to using as little um as little information as possible and as little energy as possible it wants to do what is quick and fast and easy in regards to patterns so that it can minimize how much uh information or energy it needs to give in order to um to just function So I encourage you to kind of just take it slow, um, start up new things. But most importantly, here's definitely my tip. Be consistent. 
when you try to engage in consistency in some capacity, those old ways will start to lose power in being in re reestablish and re are um, kind of uh, reinforced in your brain. And so what your brain likes to do, which is in reflection to um, a classic conditioning. So shout out to Pavlov and the dogs is that it will engage what is called extinction. And when it, it experiences that extinction, um, it won't, that pattern in your brain might just kind of go away. Yeah. Um, this is, yeah. So Al says, it feels like muscle memory, if that's the right wording for it. Every time that muscle memory triggers, the afterthought is what hurts. I mean, that kind of makes sense. I mean, it, it, when you said it's like with patterns and stuff, um, it reminds me of when my mom had uh, quit smoking because mm -hmm. she went and got, I don't know if you heard this story, but uh, my mom, she got hypnotized to stop smoking because one of her friends wanted to go do it. And my mom said, yeah, whatever, I'll go just to, you know, entertain the idea. And mm -hmm. so she decided to go through with it. And she said the next morning she got in the car and just didn't want a cigarette. But then she also didn't know what to do while in the car. Cause she would get in the car, start the car, light up a cigarette and let the car warm up while she smoked that cigarette. And then she would go. So she was just sitting mm -hmm. there kind of looking around like, okay, the car is on now. What? Yeah. So I imagine it's, it's pretty much, it's gotta be similar. Yes. It's exactly similar. Because the system is so accustomed to the pattern of A, B, C, D, right? That when you remove B, you get to A and you're like, uh, what? So yeah. what, ha what you need to do is by slowly readjusting to a new B, then it will allow the flow of information to happen again where things don't feel so uncomfortable a lot of times when people say i'm uncomfortable with change what i hear is that you are you don't know how are like you are not accustomed to a new pattern of norm what is um a familiar uh of a form of familiarity and but just like everything when you change that or reinforce it or get accustomed to it, that discomfort of the unknown starts to diminish. It's very kind of simple in that. that. Yeah, like if you're going to school and that first day of school, you're like, crap, where's my classes? I don't know what to do. But then, you know, after like the third week, you just are on autopilot. You know exactly which room to go to. Yeah, you know, exactly. Next, so. and very similar to the concept to anyone that knows how to drive right because when Which you is first not very learn... many people <laughs> sure that's yeah, true but <laughs> when people learn to drive um they are so there's so much energy and so much kind of a, such a significant level of energy that is being put to every little thing within the car where are the emergencies where are the blinkers um which mirrors do i look at let me look at the details how far is that car where is my car foot on gas pedal if you do manual clutch you know all these things right mm -hmm. um and then when you get so accustomed to this environment this is where people say i couldn't tell you the details of the drive from here to there because your brain doesn't need to overexert itself to do that anymore yes and I honestly think that's what causes piss poor driving is people just go on autopilot and just stop paying attention to what's happening around them. Yes, this is exactly what happens. This is why, like, for, like, this is why the whole thing of, like, distractions is so crucial. Like, when I was kind of going over it and understanding more in the driver's manual, about what they are about distractions it's like distractions or anything that is not having your attention on the road it doesn't matter if it's your phone which is again a very significant and very valuable or uh, you know easy distraction yeah. but it's if the, if the car or if the kids are screaming in the back seat it's if you're having a chat with somebody in uh you know in the car in some capacity it's if you're trying to put on or do something with your hair or put on your makeup because I've seen that happen a lot. God, I uh, see that every day. 
and it's like it's like you trying to get in a few bites of your sandwich or the food that you just picked up or the all bottom of, of your things, foot itches or the bottom of your foot that's itches. a distraction all of all of these things are distractions and when that happens it impacts the amount of infra or energy that is put into the situation at hand yes so so that being said um to go back to what al is saying is that like yes it is like muscle memory in a sense um and even in that muscle memory because again that's very much the kind of the uh logistics of how the brain works you're still gonna have feelings like this is why when people are like they're like i did did, did or like it, it's just this pattern every day da, 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 or whatever the case may be it's like but i still feel this way it's like yes because there is a difference between knowing how you feel which again is in your is in your thinking brain versus experiencing or feeling your feelings which is in your feeling brain which part's the feeling brain the feeling brain well, i'm trying to see this in relation to the uh what you got on there i have half a head <laughs> Sensory cortex, that's probably not it. Sensory and speech, no. Fingers, so, no. Premotor. So the, the, when it comes to our, the, 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 when it comes to the parts that hold our feelings, right? That's going to be our amygdala. And it's a very, it's very small. Where would it be located, roughly? It's in the, um, well, actually, it's in your limbic, or it's in the part of the limbic system. Because remember, I said that's where the basic emotions are. Uh-huh. But where it is in location to it is that it's somewhere in that it's somewhere closer to, um, I believe, closer to the prefrontal. Um, let me see. Um, make the left. How do you spell it? Amygdala is A M Y G D A D A L A. Gotcha. And yeah. it's the major processing center for emotions. But when it comes to feelings, Feelings are what we subjectively make them. Feelings are when we get this information from our body, these different things like we talked about earlier, it's like our stomach clenching, our heart feels, or like we feel heaviness in our chest. Right. All these different things, right? But what we consider it, it and what we label it, that is our feelings. That's why feelings are subjective. All feelings are subjective. Now, there are certain ones that kind of fall into categories that make more sense than others. It's like you if you give me the information of like, oh, I got in a car accident today and my dog ate my homework and my car is on fire, right? Right. Whatever. These things, and you're smiling and laughing the whole time there may be a disconnect or an impact to the space or and to the bridge between your emotions and your feelings. Yeah. Cause I've seen people that are in situations like you've seen this happen to kids. I'm sure where like their parents will be yelling at them and then they just start laughing and then their parents get all pissed off and start whipping the shit out of them. Yeah. So that never seems to go over too well. Um, no. Let's see, Al added something else. I don't know if you read it. So I try not to do the things I used to, to, but it feels like I'm trying so hard. For example, before I go into my car, I repeat to myself, you're single, don't pull up the phone to call her. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a good way of doing it. Yeah. So what you're doing is called explicit mentalization. Or it's also called controlled mentalization at least in mentalization mentalization term right controlled mentalization 
is when you actively engage and you activate the space from subconscious to conscious. And when you are controlling your behavior, very similar to this, ready? Um, I bet I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it to Kilted right now. Very easily. That's me. Yeah. You are now aware of the pattern to which you are breathing. That's annoying. Now you're thinking about yeah. it. But now, now you are thinking about it. Right. Right. I am too. I did. I like as much as people are like, "Oh, tee hee, I did this." Somebody else. Here's the here's the kicker. They're doing it to themselves too, so they're not that slick. I actually saw somebody on TikTok pull that crap. I think when I was laying in bed the other day, they're like, "How like how far apart are your teeth from each other?" Such a pain in the ass, dude. Yeah. Can you um, feel like? How dry or like how much air is going through your nose? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you feel your hair growing? I'm like, oh geez, would you stop this crap? <laughs> so you are shifting from the subconscious to the conscious in that moment, right? So right. now because again, remember what we said. Your your brain wants to use as little energy as possible. That's why we're not sitting here all day thinking about I'm depending, I'm going to say in a broad sense, I don't can't speak on behalf of everyone. But we're not sitting there like, I breathed in, I breathed out, I breathed in. We don't do that, right? We just do it, right? We don't think twice about it. Unless something changes that, right? So <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anybody who wants to have an experiment like this and you play video games, look up a game called uh, Manual Samuel. Oh my god. <laughs> Have you heard of it? I have. Yeah, you have to control everything the guy does. You have to tell him, breathe in, breathe out, move a leg, lean. do this, lean, say words. It's so funny. It, it's it's anyway, a manual person. <laughs> when you then, out, when you go from, when you tell yourself, don't call, oh, don't pull up your phone and call her, after a while, you're just going to automatically do that. Then that's what is called automatic mentalization so that's where you're not thinking about it it's just something that you naturally just do yeah so it's just a matter of time i think i missed something that michaela said uh, uh I, ugh. yeah ugh, i hate, I hate my when siblings. my siblings keep the shower curtain closed when they get out of the shower now are they trying to walk through the curtain um they're trying to be who they need they're like, they're time to get out, and then they just go through the curtain. <laughs> it's just manifest. Yeah, just hands up and just... <laughs> just rips it yeah. off the wall. Yeah, that sounds like it'd be oh kind my of God. That would be such a barbarian shit. Me done now. <laughs> <laughs> Me so done, fun. wash. Me get out. <laughs> a, B, no obstacle. <laughs> just go. <laughs> Only C. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um. So yeah. So the whole thing is, is that like coming back to what we were talking about is like, I. This is why a lot of times people, or like even if you if you hung around me on the area outside of the stream, um, which doubt that for anyone that is in the chat, <laughs> that you will hear me say, oh yeah, yeah, I'm like when people say like oh i got him so like i want to cry but i shouldn't i'm like just cry like just if you want to do because another piece that comes into this is the environment to which you have yourself in that reinforces the messages um related to your mental health there is a quote by bruce lee that is so important that this is like that reflects why when people sit talk about themselves a certain way i i take it as a reflection of their mental health so when i'm around people and people are like you're psychoanalyzing me i'm like i'm doing i'm like i'm not psychoanalyzing you because i think it's all fun and joys it's that i'm a traumatized person and the way that you talk about yourself can give me some insight of how you're going to treat me so that's what's going on for anyone that gives me shit. This is what Bruce Lee said. Don't speak negatively about yourself. 
even as a joke. Your body doesn't know the difference. Words are energy and they cast spells. That's why it's called spelling. Change the way you speak about yourself and you can change your life. At first, or when I was younger, I thought that was horseshit. But I 100% understand it. That's why even if I, even when I began the journey of like self-acceptance, I didn't believe that I liked myself or I didn't believe half of the shit that I was thinking. Because again, very similar to what we've been talking about is that there is that pattern of I get in the car, I start the car, I light a cigarette and I smoke it while the car warms up. Right. right? Except in order for me to change the way I think about myself, I need to stop reinforcing the negative belief I have about myself. That is the responsibility I feel people really need to understand they have and that the words that they say about themselves does impact the way that they view themselves and how they view their world, such as things as self-esteem, such as interpersonal relationships, such as confidence, uh, such as happiness and so forth. So whenever I'm around environments that are not attempting to reinforce and promote change or care or love and stuff like that, I kind of, I, I get a feeling of like wanting to kind of step away from those environments because I feel like it's a reflection that this individual is at a place that they are um, that they want to continue to reinforce that and to and to think that that may not bleed onto me is a disservice to myself that's just mine that's just my my values point at this point and i what believe we've we've even had some people in chat with that mm-hmm that we've it, seen it real time we had yeah. that one person like a couple of months ago yeah, I don't remember their name off the top of my head, but yeah, it was just constant, I'm terrible, this and that, and it's like, all right, well, we recommend this and this, no, that won't work, nothing's ever going to work, it's like, okay, well, if you're not willing to at least try, then we can't help. Yeah, it's the, that's why. Uh, it's the oh, thing, uh, we try to help those that have the power to help themselves. Exactly. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. You can't help people who are not ready to get help. Yes. And this is the difference. When people say, I want to change, and people changing. Anyone can say the words, I want to change. I've had clients day in and day out say it. I've had clients working for months. They're like, I want to change. I want this to be different. Blah, 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 all these things. I'm like, but what ways outside of the therapy session which ways in your everyday life are you allowing and reinforcing the change i have to emphasize it is not easy and i know it's not easy but you know what else isn't easy remaining an enemy to self <laughs> that shit is energy draining and exhausting i hated myself for so fucking long that after a while, I'm like, I'm sick and tired about being sick and tired. So, what are your thoughts? It makes sense. I mean, I've tried those techniques. Um, it's still difficult. I still have a hard time with it. Mm -hmm. um, I can say that I'm not really making the progress i want but there has been progress so sure. at least that's better than nothing well it's not gonna happen overnight and i'm not saying that you just started i know that this has been a journey for you but this oh this goes into another great topic because because Asteria is just on a good one tonight yay <laughs> this goes into another topic i'd like to bring up so if you would like to kill tim Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I'll just send it to you um, because I think I wanted to show a specific version of what I'm talking about. Oh, it's this one. Yay. 
I will send it to you on our oopsie. Not on our oopsie. On uh Messenger. That's what I'll send it. There you the go. Sanger. Yeah. So what we're gonna be talking about now is drum roll please is we are going to be talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There we go. Chat look a little focus. Which I don't there it is. Take a snapshot or something or just read it over real quick while she discusses it. Up oh, yep. Yeah. Maslow's hierarchy of needs talks about the the levels of needs to which we are it, it 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 possesses the human being needs and it brings them into two sets of needs it brings it down into deficiency uh where is yeah it's deficiency i'm trying to remember the other term it, it is and Oh, having a human moment. It brain, definitely talks. Brain. I can't remember the other term, but um, but the whole point is when it comes to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, is that we're breaking it down in regards to um, the importance of these different types of 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 needs in order for us to um, kind of just man that impact the way that we maneuver in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's so important about the one that I specifically sent to Kilted is that for the one I sent to Kilted, it's broken down into three subsections. And it's important to know that unless the system that is you has the ability or has a sufficient amount of these needs that are being met or met, excuse me, then um, it will not be receptive to other levels above it because the foundation beneath it has not been met. All right, so down at the bottom of the pyramid, we have our basic needs. So the physiological needs are food, water, warmth, and rest. So that's basically if we don't have that human no human so if we do not have and we are experiencing a deficiency of food water warmth and rest anything above that will not settle it will not sit in a system your system will not be receptive to it this is because why because it they always say make sure you eat plenty of food drink plenty of water and get enough rest great because if not you will very much not be receptive to the ones above it. Which are the, uh, the safety needs, security and safety. This one is really crucial when it comes to trauma. Because as we've indicated before, as the research article that I brought in a couple of weeks ago stated, that if your system still believes that you are in the midst of the trauma, and the trauma, excuse me, the traumatic events that you have endured and you have not processed them or that you have not obtained a label, label or a level of safety to which your system feels like you are no longer in those ongoing reinforcements of your trauma. It will also impact the receptiveness of the levels above it. And the next immediate level above security and safety is belongingness and love needs, which include intimate relationships and friends. So this is going into the next subset, which is psychological needs. So now we've gone to the basic needs into the psychological needs. Belongingness and love needs, intimate relationships and friends. Connection, oh God, this is, this is so important. I'm gonna get closer to the mic, but not too close. <clears throat> Connection with other humans in a safe way is non-negotiable. If you do not have these, your body, your brain will not be receptive 
to the level above belongingness and love needs, which is esteem needs, including prestige and feelings of accomplishment. This means that you will not be able to be okay with self if you do not have an environment that reinforces your importance and your needs and your, er, er, excuse me, and your needs, because again, your needs are also non-negotiable because that plays a role into the safety. And that also plays an impact in your access to resources such as food, water, warmth, and rest. Yes. So that one might be a little bit of a loop. Yeah. The next uh, one is... So, uh, yeah, after a self-esteem needs, unless you wanted to go into that more. No, it's just the esteem. It's like feeling of accomplishment or feeling... It's also about motivation. About, like, being able to connect to these types of feelings and being receptive to it. The last one is its own category, which is called self-fulfillment. Self, uh, which call is, is the tippy top of, hi, of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, is called self actualization. Achieving one's full potential, including creative activities, unless you have food or water, warmth, and rest, unless you feel safe, unless you have relationships that reinforce and support you, unless you are willing to accept. Um, that feeling of accomplishment and motivation to continue to feel that, you will not be able to feel like you can achieve your full potential. It will feel like you keep on reaching for the sky and just falling back to the ground. Be and so you will not engage in activities that include um, abstractness and um, creativity and arts and um, ways to kind of to view the different maneuvers to or different uh, mechanics that impact the world because the foundation underneath you does not hold enough solidness and security to be able to do so. When you get to a place where you get these other elements, you are willing to be more receptive to the world. This is where you get more worldly and you will actually have a lot less internalized suffrage that you would experience the last piece i'll talk about when it comes to maslow's hierarchy of needs is that if you uh, as reflected to what maslow has shared in his studies is that if you are someone that experienced a level of deficiency in any of the areas underneath uh, the the top point of self-actualization when you receive access to those points in your into uh in your life like if you had um friendship if you have security if you have these things if you are new to it and or the amount that you receive doesn't outweigh the impact of the defi of the time that you were deficient in it you still not only ha have to remain in it or like just having it is not enough you have to, your body also has to feel that it will stay there and it will remain consistent in your life before it will allow you to move on to the next step. That's a hard one. Yes, it is. I wanted to pause because I saw something pop up in the chat. Oh yeah, uh, Al says, oh, random thing that made me feel weird today. I went to a local woman's football match with my friends and I cheered a certain girl on the team since she was playing really good after the match. She approached me and asked me for my Snapchat. I said, I'm really sorry. I'm going through a hard time and rejected her politely. After that, she stumbled in her speech and went off and some random guys started laughing at the girl and I felt super bad. That's not, well, I'm sorry you feel bad about it. I mean, it's uh, nothing you did wrong. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm kind of jealous that just cheering for someone and they came up and were like, hey, let me talk to you. That's a, yeah. that's gotta be a good feeling. I mean, if I did that, I'd probably get kicked out of wherever I'm at. In fact, there's a creepy guy back there cheering me on and I don't like it. So I'd say good for you. Try not to feel bad about that one. I'm going to call that one a win. And you were able to... Or feel whatever you want. Yeah, to or feel whatever it. you want. 
Uh, but it's good that you were able to say, hey, you know, I'm not in a place to be meeting people. So you acknowledge that. So you're aware of that. So that's good. I, yeah, I think there's a lot of good stuff happened there. I think that you were very authentic, Al. Because by saying that and being forthcoming about this, you might have, in a very, in an alternative world, may have decreased the likelihood of a lot of pain between you and this other individual. Um, so, I think by being true to yourself, I think that, um, I think that that was a very, um, admirable way to go about this in order to not only actually express care to this other individual but also to express care to yourself yes uh, i think that was, that's a high five move right there shout out high five move to out so yeah that was pretty good um all right i lost track where were we oh monsters hierarchy of needs yes the, the food um, pyramid of living. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel, uh, I mean, it all makes sense. And I know exactly where I'm stuck on that thing. And I really don't know how to get off that platform. Al says, well, that was the first time a girl approached me kilted. So it's new for me too. Oh, okay. So, I mean... I don't know what to say to that then. I was going to say, oh, that's good, but that kind of sucks. That's the first time that's happened, but <laughs> it is what it is. A new experience, it sounds like. Yeah, that was a new experience. So that happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the yeah that uh, triangle or whatever, the hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know where I'm stuck on that pyramid, and I have a hard time getting past it, so. Mm-hmm. As we all know, they've been here plenty of times. And I know quite a few people that are stuck in that spot. And it's awesome. unfortunate. I mean, it is what it is. I think, like, if you were at a place outside of the bottom, the bottom level, I think it shows a lot of reflection of, like, the access to your resources. Um, So, like... A lot of spaces, especially if you live in a low so e low socioeconomic area, if you um, if you live in a place that's dominantly impacted by um, poverty or war or um, just weather that impacts the ability to have these needs. I feel a lot of times that can play an impact on how an individual can see the world. And so a lot of times when people say, how could this person like maneuver in the world like that? I say, have you considered what resources they have access to in orders or in order for them to have the, the ability to see how you see the world? Um, because these are pieces that could also impact how you view the world so a lot of times when people are like i can't believe that they would do that or one of the famous ones i always hear when people the whole um social or sometimes a hot button topic of of if you saw somebody steal from the store um but you found out they were doing it in order to feed themselves or feed their family um what are your thoughts i say hey like ultimately like we're uh, humans are the only creatures on the goddamn planet that pay to have to be here um and exist here which is so interesting yes. um so if they're doing that to survive such as it is like um so and if and when people are like oh i can't believe that somebody could do something like that i'm like if it was the line between life or death I fucking steal all the bread. <laughs> yeah, so would I. So yeah. Um. Anyway, how I'm doing? <laughs> yeah, I don't think um, I asked you. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> like we just went straight into it today. Yes, because um, I, I I have brain. I mean, oh gosh, I hope you have brain because if you had a bowl of soup instead. This would be a very interesting 
uh, experience. I pulled brain um, out, replaced with soup. Um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? Uh, oh, would you like a clam chowder? Because I wouldn't I hate clam chowder. No, anyway. what? Oh, come on, clam chowder is great. Love oh that. God, I would rather eat rocks. Um, so what was I gonna say? Um, how am I doing? I well, I would like to kind of talk about um, a few things. One. I'd like to talk about, um, sorry, I know that my my stream is delayed because I'm watching you, mm -hmm. um, but I just saw your interaction with the brain. <laughs> <laughs> nothing um, happened, nothing, there's nothing between us, I swear. There's nothing between you and brain? No. Oh, no. We are completely <laughs> disconnected from each other. <laughs> that's not good. I don't think that's the flex. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, um, so for anyone that may know or may not know on here, I, um, I go with my partner and I support in celebrating, um, a few days of Kwanzaa and in celebrating Kwanzaa, I attended the last day of Kwanzaa, which again, Kwanzaa for anyone that is unfamiliar is a seven day process. Uh, our celebration and so um when i went to the last day of kwanzaa it was um it was very interesting and it was very community based and like when i experienced when i experienced kwanzaa i was like oh there's so many people i think that would very much enjoy and like kwanzaa even you killed it i think okay. like i it's very interesting because okay I, and i'll explain why so on the last day of kwanzaa the last day of kwanzaa is um, it's talking, ugh, I'm trying to remember the exact term, but ultimately it's talking about like going into the new year. Right. Right. Um, I'm like that determined the last day of, Qu oh, it's the last day is faith. That's it. Um, which, uh, in Swahili is Imani. Um, and in the day of of faith at least with the folk i can't speak on behalf of everyone that celebrates kwanzaa but on the the folks that i joined what they do is that you talk about the concept about faith but also what they do is that they have you discuss various subjects related to the other days of um because each day of kwanzaa has this topic associated mm -hmm. to it and then what they do is that they have you set uh identify goals that you have set up for yourself going into the new year that supports whatever topic landed for you. Um, and then in a very communi community base, because it's not just, oh, what are your new year re resolutions? They say, what is it that you want to accomplish this year? How are you going to do that for yourself? And how can we support you in accomplishing that? And I was like, oh, I was not I was not ready for that question. So not only do you come up with something you want to accomplish, but you also have to have a plan on how to do it and then you also have people there to back you up to make sure it gets done. Yeah, well it's not even like a plan, but it's like just an idea and right. they'll even brainstorm together with you of like, hey, how this is how we can do it together. Right. And then they'll find ways to like check up on you and make a plan with you and stuff like that. And I was like whoa and like that and for me one of my values is community and connection right so i was like this is super cool to me to think that not only am i saying these are the goals for myself but you're making a priority to help me uphold that for myself too and then i do that to you too yeah so i do that for them as well so anyway so we were so with that here are some things that i'm taking into the year and this is goes into the question of how am i doing because what um sorry i saw what all or al says like, that's very nice it gives a uh new depth to the traditional or to the traditional of what is your new year resolution yeah i agree al yeah uh i i thought that was really interesting because i feel like again what we've talked about is like community right and so 
in that, what landed for me was the day of creativity. And I was, and they're like, what are ways that you want creativity to look like in your life, right? Well, um, again, the whole creativity in itself, I wanted to create a different way of how I want the year to like end up for me. But one of the de- distinct ways of how I want creativity to show up in my life is the way that I create the home that I'm living in. Because one of the goals that I have for this year is that I'm going to move. Right. And when I'm, and actually I'm going to be moving in closer proximity to, to Kilton. Um, so, so what I want to do is that I want to create that as my home, um, in a much deeper way of rather than just living there and with a place to kind of just store all my crap, but actually like a home, like not just a place to live, but a home. And I want to create that space. And so the ways that they're going to support is that they're going to support in regards to getting creative ideas to doing that, helping me build stuff if I needed to build stuff. Um, And in that, um, checking up to make sure if like, hey, like, how can I make this happen? Right. And so when I brought that to mind I was like what are some other ways I was like but I also wanted to create or the creativity I want to see in different ways I want to create how I want my life to look like moving forward because a lot of last year was me learning to like love myself and accept help and to be trusting and um, reach out when I needed uh, support and all these things which I feel very trusting in my support system now where I don't have to carry things alone. That's awesome. Yeah, it just took 85 years. Anyway. Um, Welcome, Darth Jammin. And so, Darth Jammin is one of them. Um, so, what I said was, I'm going to, or so for the Kwanzaa folk, what they said is that uh, they'll uphold me by checking in on me. It's like, hey, how's it going? What are ways I can support you? And I was like, that's really, really cool. But if that means if I have that community with me, I have to take the responsibility of how I reinforce that in my own life, right? Mm-hmm. So what I, my major res, you know, resolutions for the year, or what my goals are for myself for the year um, that I'm going to attempt, I don't want to like because again i think attempt is much better than saying like i will do because if you don't do it then there's a lot of shame and guilt opportunities but what i'm going to attempt my best to do is i want more calmness so i'm going to create a lot more calmness in my life where i'm going to like i'm not going to jump when people want me to jump for crises anymore Mm -hmm. that um just don't need my energy anymore um, because just because I'm really good at crises doesn't mean I have to keep being like the center of them. Right. Uh, I can't keep doing it. My nervous system is shot. It's like begging me to stop. So I am. Um, unless I'm getting paid for it. So that's Money makes the... everything better. <laughs> Money uh, is a good incentive. Um, so, so I'm going to, I'm adopting more calmness since this year. I'm adopting more creativity and that also means doing stuff much more spontaneously like creating different ways of how like um like instead of just doing a b c every single day it's like oh all of a sudden it's like hey I'm gonna go do this spontaneous little adventure to go do like clay making or I'm gonna go do this little thing of going to an art museum because I love going art museums or I'm gonna go to like I already have plans this month where they're doing a show of um they're doing a um with uh classical instruments they're gonna be doing that to uh Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings music and um I would like to go attend that because that sounds awesome to me and so I'm gonna go just do stuff like that but the last thing I'm definitely gonna do and this goes again to this long answer to the question is I'm also going to decrease significantly how I fawn to people (laughs) because I have to admit 
that I'm somebody that has fought, has leaned into fawning, F A W N I N G, as a form of my trauma response, which is one of the four trauma responses, which is located in your limbic system. So back to the brain. Back to the brain. Um, For people who um, missed what the limbic system is. Every time I think system. we're done talking about it, I stick it back together. <laughs> it's like back. It's like, just kidding. Grab the brain. <laughs> Oh, they said the word, grab the brain. Grab, grab the brain. <laughs> um, the limbic like, system. The limbic system. Boop, 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 boop. The orange uh, bit in the middle. The orange bit in the middle. Um, So, the what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to learn to, to tell my, in order to tell my body that things are different now, I'm going to engage in less fawning. So if anyone is unfamiliar of what fawning is in regards to trauma responses, fawning is when you engage in actions or verbal commentary that is in order to appease somebody else as a means to decrease discomfort or threats to self. So fawning could look like look like um agreeing to doing something even though you don't want to do it and there's a difference between agreeing to do it and you don't want to but it's like hey i'm willing to do it versus you really don't want to do it but the desire to not want to do it is outweighed from the repercussions you think is going to happen if you say no and these are two different scenarios, right? Yeah. And and it's going to be not me going up and beyond any longer because I have gone up and beyond for a long time um, in my job, in my social areas, so much that it burns me out in all of areas. So I'm going to... So what fawning less means is I'm going to be a lot more careful of where I put my energy and I'm going to be a lot more mindful of what deserves my energy. Um, and that means just doing the job, not being the best at my job because I don't get, I get paid downright this era the same for the same people that are not doing the best at their job. So why am I exerting more energy? Yes. Right. I don't so, like that mentality, but I have that mentality. Right. And and I won't speak on for you, Kilted, but the reason I do that is because that's a trauma piece for me. For deep, 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 deep in my body. So much that it has been congratulated and supported by many people. Because again, not only just my family, but also my society. It promotes work hard work hard work hard and you'll get rewarded except you don't I get did rewarded. work hard <laughs> i worked hard i got rewards i won't lie but it was but the rewards i realized i got it wasn't because i put my blood sh uh, sweat and tears into everything it just was me saying the right thing at the right time and when I realized that and kind of just took a step back, I was just like, I don't need to keep using and throw it. It's like, it's like the world keeps saying, Hey, you just need to pay $10. And I say, here's a hundred. Why would anyone do that? Um, Cause you think you're going to get more, but you don't, but no, I'm just out 90 bucks. Right. Yeah. I'm good. I'm tired now. So I'm not going to, and with, so in this week, I've been kind of applying it a lot at work and I see the difference. So different or like it has only been a couple of days and I'm like, there is already such a difference I see in the small different or the small change I made. It's that there is the with my job, especially my job. It is very easily, or it's very easy to get swept up in the anxieties of your clients. 
Right. Especially because I work in so many in the in very uh, with higher levels of care that ha- need a lot more or have a lot of intensity in regards to symptomology severity, right? So, but the thing is, is that I realize I don't have to meet their anxieties where they're at. Because then if I'm stressed out, when they're stressed out, then nothing gets done. Then you can't provide the level of care that they expect or need. Yeah, exactly. So this week, there has been a lot of things happening because it's the first week of the year. And this is where everybody pays their deductibles. (laughs) And they go and they are like, new year, new me, time to get mental health. Yeah. So it's not just for the gym. It's also your local therapist. Um, Honestly, the gym has... I've seen one new person. Ah, uh, well, maybe... Which is weird. Gym this year. I don't know what is happening. Um, I could say that from the gyms in the area, just for seeing them as I'm driving by, they are slammed. I'm just like, oh, no, thank you. Um, however, when I see all this and I see even my, my really good friends like co-workers and they're like oh my god oh my god oh my god I'm just sitting there I'm just like okay like, what you freaking out for there bud like it's it doesn't deserve so much of you anymore yeah. it doesn't deserve so much of me at least that's all I can say and so I myself am good I'm leaning into trust like I made a mistake this week I accidentally doing something that was me accidentally throwing away something of Artemis's. It was completely an accident. Mm -hmm. My trauma said, hide it. Like, don't let him know you did it. But I said, but I trust Artemis. Why wouldn't I just tell him? Um, And I told him and I received the message of thank you for your honesty. And I'm like, this is a reflection. Like, this is weird. (laughs) Oh, no, trust me. It's downright new because if I ever made a mistake like this to anybody, like, especially when to our father, like when we were growing up, I would have got yelled at. Everything would have been in chaos. Something was on fire for some reason. Yeah. Um, But I was just like. In order to accept the new world, I have to also place my my efforts into reinforcing it myself. So, I myself am good. I'm <clears throat> I'm just kind of just trusted in allowing things to be, because I also realize that me overexerting myself into trying to force things to happen things that are outside of my control because I could only truly control myself. Um, I've realized that I have kept a lot more of my $90. <laughs> That's good. And, I, and I've only gave 10 bucks. And do you feel and better? I have so much. Do you see how much I've been talking tonight? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have so much more energy to do things that I want to do. Like, I love talking about mental health. I love talking about psychology and the brain. And now it's not like this is taxing in itself. It's that I get, and again, not that this is taxing. It's that because I gave my, I used to give so much of my energy to everything else. I didn't get to enjoy the things that I want to enjoy. So that's why, like, of course I wasn't watching the shows that I tend to enjoy. Of course I didn't wasn't playing the video games that I like to play because I gave it to everything else. But what about me? So that's my answer to the question of how I am. How are you? I mean that makes sense cuz I I said I've said this lately it's just I don't feel like I'm enjoying the things I used to enjoy. Just, mm-hmm. I'm constantly tired. I wake up, I'm tired. I go to the gym. I used to enjoy that, but it just makes me more tired. And then I go to that job I used to like when I started there. And I'm tired. And then I come home and do whatever around here, even playing video games or 
watching TV. I'm just tired all the time. Mm -hmm. um, Al says, I always skip going to the gym in January because it's too busy. I get that. Uh, if I wouldn't give up on it entirely. Maybe you just switch your training over to something else. Go outside, do some running or, you know, mm -hmm. something you can do outdoors. Work on the cardio. Yeah, do some alternatives. Um, but yeah, other than that, how am I doing? Uh, well, like I said, I'm tired. Uh, mm -hmm. just kind of mentally burnt out. Um, I did do some, what do I want to call it? House, house cleaning? No. Basically, I went through my phone and I deleted a lot of people. A lot of people. I, I did that too. Yeah, because right, I'm, I'm just, excited, but continue. yeah, because I, over the past few months i'd text certain people like hey I'm, like i'd reach out like hey what are you up to you want to hang out blah 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 either no response or excuse 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 and, and you know some people may say oh maybe they are too busy i was like dude three months you cannot like i understand being busy but if you literally cannot find any time that means you don't want it to happen because if you want something to happen you will make time for it or in that they may also, I mean, it could also, another alternative I would like to offer if it's okay, it's like, you know, it's that they are so accustomed to these patterns, like we talked about earlier, that they don't think that they have the, they may not have the capacity to change the pattern, or they don't have the energy to be able to, to warrant space for a new pattern. How do you mean? So it's like, remember, so again, remember how we were saying about being so busy and so accustomed to these patterns in our life that like, because our body and our brain wants to use as little energy as possible. Yeah. This also goes into socialization because socializing takes energy, right? Yeah. And so, especially with the circumstances of now of, of like when it comes to survival and money and responsibilities and stuff like that, people indirectly receive the message of, I have everything that has to keep lining up like this, or they feel like they're gonna crack or what in, in some capacity or another, whether it, it's observable or it's internal and we don't see what's going on. And so they won't hold space for different things in their life because they're managing the different other pieces of their hierarchy of needs and they feel like if they give their attention to other places or they may not be receptive to energy in other places so they may feel like um they may feel like uh they don't have that capacity to be able to receive new change gotcha i'll said something Al says, you've talked about it last stream and I relate with Kilted on that. Sometimes it's hard to appear out of nowhere and try to reconnect. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I've done that with a few people. I try to like come back. I'm like, hey, what's going on? You know, and but I give them the benefit of the doubt because I understand it's hard to just jump back into something. Like I said, after trying for months and months and months and months and months and then I'm just like, okay, they're just not going to be a part of my life anymore. And so uh, I cleared them out because I, I don't want to waste my energy and go through the whole feeling of rejection and all that crap that I already have a hard time with. So it may not be a good thing. I'm not sure, but I'm just avoiding putting myself in the situation. I get it. Like, and, and that's the, that's the personal responsibility that you can take is like not investing in areas that are not also investing into you yes so, sorry as you're speaking I, I went and decided to delete the rest of the context that i <laughs> i said that i was going to go ahead and do this you're going to go delete uh, the rest of the way the contacts that oh. uh, i said that i was going to go ahead and do because i have just invested so much into others and it is ridiculous um but anyway um what was i gonna say yeah you were saying about um what was going on with you yeah so i mean that was just one thing i did um 
over the new year, you know, I was just kind of exhausted by the time the weekend was over because I had spent a lot of time drinking. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't out of a need, like, oh, man, I feel like crap. I, I should drink or whatever. Well, actually, I can't say that entirely because I did have some drinks. And then the next morning, I woke up and I was like, not hungover, but I was just like, ugh. I was like, I just need to kind of like wear that off. And then like I'd have a drink. I was like, all right, cool. And then I can go through my day. And at the end of the day, I was like, all right, let's do something. Let's have some drinks. And then I'd have to like play that same process for like three days. And then I was like, all right, yeah. time to go back to work. I can't be doing this shit anymore. Yeah. Hey. I was just like, ah, oh, that's fun. But I should have slept at some point. <laughs> but, I should have slept at some point. I like that. Yeah, it is what it is. So maybe I'm still not recovered from it. And luckily, I don't have to do any like meal prep or anything this weekend. So hopefully, I have time for sleep. And thank hopefully goodness, you it's do. A, yeah. And thank goodness it's only a four day work week since Monday was New Year's. It's hard to believe that it was only still this week. It feels like it's so far away already for some reason. I don't know why. Honestly, it feels like it was like freaking forever. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, that was th- three days ago. And I was like, oh. Wow. <laughs> oh. I already slipped back into my routine that hard where I didn't even notice that it happened. And that happens sometimes. Yeah, that's brutal. Um, What are some things that you want to uphold for yourself for this upcoming year? Oh, what do I want to do this year? I'm trying to. Th- I was trying to think of that. Like, what can I do that's not already within my standard like routine of crap? So I can't say get in shape because that's already part of my routine. Mm-hmm. I can't say you know go to school because that's already part of my routine. Oh. Um. Can I make a suggestion? I'm. Tr- I want to try to be more social, but that is kind of outside of. No, not fully, but I mean, you know, that relies on other people, mm-hmm. which has been a big problem in my life. Luckily, I've been, you know, talking a lot with Pogmas, and him and I have been getting along pretty good. So I think, you know, we'll probably spend more time hanging out and all that good stuff because, you know, I like hanging out with the guy. He's a good dude. So probably be seeing him a lot more uh, around and I don't know what your guys' plans are this weekend but there might be consideration of more Magic the Gathering with uh, Pogmas. There he is. Speak of the devil. He's in chat. So We're gonna look at that. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Alright, what was your suggestion? Well, I was gonna say because of what we've been talking about with uh, you and the wait list Oh, yeah, trying to get into the the therapeutics. Yay! That is the wrong word entirely, now that I think about it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That is something else entirely. Therapy. Um, I actually have a note sitting here on my desk. I do have to send them uh, information. Mm -hmm. And I should have done it a couple days ago, but I keep forgetting. By the time I get home, I got to send them, I guess, my health insurance like a picture of the front and the back of it and then name date of birth all that crap so everyone be excited like i am for tilted boop 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 boop. i'm glad some is excited well i'm just tired so that's probably why i'm not excited no worries let me extend it to you some of the excitement i have for you um i'm very proud of you and, and, it's not easy. Yeah, and it's funny because you told me the place it was, and I didn't think of the name at first, but I looked it up. I was like, oh, okay, it's that place. And all I can say is I hope the inside of that building is cleaner than the outside of that building. It is. Okay, then. Because <laughs> <laughs> I looked up, I was like, oh, it's that place. I've oh, never no, been inside, but that place is fucking nasty. It's way nicer nasty. than the outside. Okay, they should it's probably clean that building. It's way nicer than the outside because it's a shared space uh-huh. with a few companies. I yeah and unless some of them moved out I know some of them moved out but but out of all of them the space that they're in is really nice and it's like very tranquil and uh, very people are kind there and stuff like that so yeah gotcha yeah the person that answered the phone was one of the people you told me I should talk to anyway so 
Yay! Okay. Yay! Very yeah. proud of you. Yeah, and I think they told me that they wanted me. I told them that you. Not. I didn't give them your name. Yeah. Because uh, I'm trying to keep that separate. But I told them that you had suggested certain things, which I need to write down and send to them. Like the, I don't know if they can help with this. Uh, that EMDR. Mm -hmm. uh the brain spotting uh what the hell is this sequoia oh spravado was, treatment oh it was the spravado treatment yeah so spravado is something separate i don't think that they could support you in that one gotcha then something about tms oh yeah that's also something i don't think that they can su support um um they that's something separate but we could talk about that one offline um, but very, uh, but the EMDR, IFS, those are definitely things I would suggest. Um, but yeah, I, nonetheless, I think it's really, uh, it's really important that you are taking those steps because, um, as many, as much as folks are like, oh, I don't want to do mental health stuff because it takes time. It takes energy. I'm like, yeah, being also depressed takes time and takes energy yeah. so where are you gonna put your energy you know what i'm saying like you gotta just choose your the choose the one that you're gonna invest into at this point yeah it's kind of like what you told me a long time ago when it came to physical health it's like it's like well yeah taking care of your physical health is gonna take time energy effort and all that it's like but so is also being physically uh not take you know just being physically unwell and not taking care of your physical health yeah, you're probably going to use more energy being unhealthy than you would be being healthy and getting to Pog being healthy. Pogmas is making Thai chili burgers. What? Ugh. You know, for someone who's freaking broke, you sure do have a great diet plan. Pogmas says, I'm not I diet plan, but... I'm broke. Well, that's okay. You don't have to go to therapy. You could come here. <laughs> yeah, um, you can come here. And also, I did recommend to him that since he will be partaking in uh classes that the school offers a mental health thing like a therapy thing uh that i had taken yeah and since he will be a student he can technically do it yeah he could he for free could. yay um but i think a lot of times like that's the whole thing i always like to say and that's why i kind of use this space is because it's like i know like i i'm not I'm not ignorant to this. I know, like, getting a mental health can be very challenging to find and resources are can be difficult, especially if you don't know how to find those resources. Yeah. But you're more than welcome to come here and we can talk about it so you don't have to do it alone. Um, I love helping people get resources. Um, and, yeah, so please feel free to come here, ask questions, or... Um, I, I'm always open to like sending you in the right direction. I'm just holding it to the capacity that it's not going to just fall on me because that's my re resolution this year. But mm -hmm. if you ever need direction and support, more than happy to provide it. Um, definitely have great people that I could recommend. I know like a lot of therapists do what is called sliding scale. Um, I know like, I found out a lot of people don't know what sliding skill is. Mm -hmm. Like I do, I have sliding skill with my therapist, um, where you can negotiate a price that is what your therapist is willing to accept and what you're willing to pay for. Right. Um, and so you don't have to pay the atrocious, like, um, amounts for therapy. Right. Um, I definitely do. Like, I know how much um okay um i i saw how much my therapist charged out the gate and i was like oh my god <laughs> um it's like do you have a but, lamborghini outside no but i know that she lives on a uh on a shared like few acres of land with her like friends and they freaking all like live together in a community i'm like oh that's uh, my dream <laughs> that's one of my dreams just to have a big space of land and all the people i actually like live in individual homes in close proximity to me yeah that would um, be nice she does that and they and they had 
kebabs for Christmas. <laughs> That's what she told so me. Jealous. I am so hungry right now, too. So between that and Pogmas talking about Thai chili burgers and me really still haven't gone to Taco Bell when I said I was going to get it like three weeks ago. <laughs> Go to Taco Bell after this. I don't have time. I am tired. It is 8.30 and I'll probably just eat what I have here and then get ready for bed. Okay, but I'm going to hold it to it that you have to get Taco Bell no later than Sunday. Uh, okay. I can probably okay. do that. Okay. See? Real, this is called realistic goals, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, Sunday is realistic. I was like, tonight, eh, eh, not so much realistic. Want to oh. bring me? You uh, want me to bring you Taco Bell? Oh well, shit! If you're offering. <laughs> Aw, see that? That's a good friend right there. Pogmas yeah. is a good friend. But maybe not today. No, because I do they... want to go to the gym in the morning and not have like uh, diarrhea. I was gonna say chorro, <laughs> which is diarrhea in Spanish. Yeah, exactly. No chorro. Um, um, but yeah, that sounds like you should get some and you should keep good people around you that give a crap about you like Pogmas. There we go. Um, all right. Well, that being said, if anybody else in chat has any other last minute questions, we are uh, officially over our two hour mark. So we would be signing off right now. So if you got anything really quick, really quick, yeah, throw it anything in. Anything else? You got 60 we, seconds. I'll give you uh, time to not only deal with the delay, but type it in. Oh, God. And then, <laughs> and then Al throws at that. I had suicidal thoughts after my breakup and all the trauma. I stood up at the rooftop and held the thought and said, you know what? I will hold that thought for now and vent about it on stream. So thank you, guys. You saved my life. Yay. We helped. Yay. I'm glad that you're doing I'm awesome. Go another though. hour, my left foot. Yeah, there is no another hour. This isn't. There, this is. I. I don't look. Maybe it, to a point, if we get up to being an affiliate on Twitch, that will be a uh, subscriber or donation goal. It's like donate like five hundred dollars, and we'll go another hour or some crap. Yeah. Like if you. If how about this? If y'all go tell one other person about this stream and have all of them participate consistently for a minimum of how how consistent? Uh, a month. A month. We will go longer. Um, I might even actually show what my face looks like. Who knows? Depends. <laughs> I might. Wow. No, we're going to save that as a sub goal. That, that might be like a... three years. What you <laughs> look at, like at a certain sub goal, you show up and you can sit here next to me and we'll do it. But you'll have a mask on or like some sort of like paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, put that bag back on. <laughs> hey, yo, put that bag back on. Exactly. Yeah, Mrs. Cow, you live in the forest. <laughs> Take that bag off your udder, girl. Oh. oh. <laughs> Hey, you put that bag back on. Oh, that was um, so, so mean. That being said, go tell your friends. If you want, if you know that mental health and therapy is expensive, guess what? Me too, and I do it. So you go tell a friend, and then that friend tells a friend, and then on um on six thirty standard or Pacific Standard Time, uh on Thursdays, you come in here. We talk about mental health. Um. And uh, that would just be really cool beans. So tell your friends. That would be cool beans. Or you can just tell them if they don't care about therapy, just be like, well, this guy plays other stupid games. Go ahead and check that out. Yeah, he also plays, oh my God, golfing. When we mini golfing. I don't do mini golfing. So unless it's on, a, what's that game? Uh, golf with your friends. Oh, yeah. We oh on PC. There is a there is a new place that I want us to go and try out that is not the usual that does not near you, but I definitely there's a new place that's south of you and north of me. Anyway, no, but we'll talk about know. that later. Yeah. But anyway, that being said, that's what we'll end for tonight. Yes, that's going to be end. Thank you everybody for stopping by. Much appreciated. Uh, yeah, if you have any mental health topics and you just came in at the last moment there, uh, go ahead and write them down. If you feel anything over the next week, write it down. We'll be back again next week, 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, same place, same channel. 
on the Kilted Pro channel if you're watching this on YouTube. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Check the link in the description below the video or go to twitch.tv forward slash Kilted underscore pork and give us a follow and join us live. Man, it's almost like I've said that a lot of times. <laughs> now I know why news anchors have no problem doing that crap. All right, so. Nitty go. <laughs> okay, bye, Chad. All right, bye, Chad. Bye, bye, bye.